Hello everyone! Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna read Violet Shink by Christine Boltaccino, pictures by Carmen Mock. I hope you like this book, so let's get started. Violet Shrink by Christine Baldacchino, pictures by Carmen Mock. Violet Shrink wears glasses like her father, Victor, but has much more hair on her head. She likes to listen to music through her purple headphones and make her own comic books under a tent of blankets in her room. At school, when it's time to play outside, Violet likes to spend the time alone. She collects leaves, stones, and dandelions to bring home and put on her windowsill. Violet likes birds, especially the birds that visit the feeder in her backyard every day. There are things Violet doesn't like too. Violet doesn't like celery in her soup. She doesn't like brand new crayons breaking the first time she uses them. She doesn't like finding hairs on the kitchen table, even if they're her own. And parties. Violet really doesn't like parties. Her father reminds her that she likes cake, music and games, and those are all things you can find at parties. Violet wants to tell her father that while she likes all those things, she doesn't like them all at the same time. Being around a lot of people makes her palms sweat. Sometimes her ears feel hot or her stomach aches. Sometimes she squeezes her teeth together so hard that her head hurts. Violet loves her father very much, even though he often gets her to go to a party by using a word she's never heard before, a word like reception or function or potluck. He tells her to play with the other children and say hello to all the grown-ups. But Violet just wishes she could stay home in her tent with her purple headphones and her comic books. One day, while she is picking celery out of her soup, Violet's father tells her that they have been invited to a little shindig for Cousin Char. When they arrive at her cousin's house, Violet is horrified to discover that it is a birthday party. Violet spends the entire time hiding under the kitchen table. She imagines she is a shark, smooth and silver, with a hundred sharp white teeth. She swims in circles and loop-de-loops, hunting for sandwiches to eat. Her ears don't feel hot anymore because sharks don't have ears that stick out the way hers do, and her palms aren't sweating because sharks don't have hands. Just two weeks later, Violet's father tells her they are going to an anniversary bash for Auntie Marlin and Uncle Laley. The word bash reminds her of loud things like drums, fireworks, or pots or, and pans banging together. Sure enough, bash turns out to be another word for party. Make sure you say hello to everyone, Violet and play with your cousins, her father says when they get there. No hiding under tables today, okay? Violet wipes her sweaty palms on her pants and squeezes her teeth together until her head hurts. She doesn't hide under a table. Instead, she sits quietly at the top of the stairs where no one can see her legs dangling between the banisters. She imagines she is a snake, gold and green as a dandelion, wrapped around the branch of a very tall tree, balanced on a 
branch below is a chocolatiest slice of chocolate cake. Violet knows her father isn't trying to be mean. He wants her to go to parties for the same reason he keeps putting celery in her soup. He thinks it is good for her. But when Violet's father tells her that the Shrink family reunion is coming up, she silently goes to her room. There will be a lot more relatives than usual, and more people means more voices, louder voices. Uncle Louie will play his accordion, and Uncle Joe will do his weird moose stuck in the mud dance, and all of Violet's aunts will laugh so that she'll feel it in the pit of her stomach. Violet isn't hungry anymore. Not even for dessert. All she wants to do is crawl into her blanket tent, put her headphones on, and draw pictures of bats. But that will have to wait. Dad, I have an important thing to say. Violet says as he is tucking her into bed for the night. Okay, he says. Putting on his listening for real face, I don't like parties. Violet's stomach gives an unpleasant little flutter. Or shindigs, or bashes, or get-togethers, or gatherings. I don't like any of those things. Her dad starts to say what he always says: "You like cake, don't you? And you like music, don't you? And you like games, don't you?" Yes, Violet replies, but not all at the same time. She tells him how her stomach hurts and her palms sweat and her ears get hot. Her father keeps his listening for real face on the whole time, which makes the words come more easily. And I don't like celery in my soup. She adds, "I don't think I ever will. What if I leave out the celery but put in extra carrots?" He asks. "I don't hate carrots," she replies. "Well, that solves that. Now, what are we going to do about all these parties? I think I know," Violet says, glancing at her blanket tent. The Shrink family reunion ends up being quite the wingding, as Violet's father would say. As expected, Uncle Louie plays the accordion, and Uncle Joe teaches all her cousins how to do his weird moose stuck in the mud dance. Everyone laughs loudly, and someone breaks a big, ugly lamp that Auntie Mary says she never liked anyway. But for the very first time, Violet's stomach doesn't ache, her palms don't sweat, and her ears don't feel hot. Because as the Shrink family parties late into the evening, Violet sits under the dessert table, purple headphones over her ears, a pile of comic books in her lap, and a smile on her face. The end. I hope you like this wonderful book. So if you like this book, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Bye bye, everyone. See you in the next video.